Welcome back to the Behind Their Business podcast, or if this is your first time listening, welcome to the show. Our guest today is going to share all about why she thought she had to lose weight in order to be successful in business. This is a topic that I have heard from so many women. So this is going to be a really good episode, but in her business, our guest is a photographer and mindset coach who has been helping women for over seven years with photography, self-love, all of that great stuff. So she's going to dive more into her story in just a second, but please welcome Miriam Bolter. Miriam, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to talk to you about this. It's a very, very passionate subject of mine. It's, I love it. Yeah, we have we have a lot to talk about. So try not to make it too long or go on too many different tangents, but we yeah. have a lot to discuss here. But before we dive into the self-love side of things, Talk about you. Talk about your journey. What were you doing before you started your photography business? Oh my gosh. So it's kind of a wild story because I actually, I went to school for personal training and then I ended up working for the military as a trainer to train the military. So it's kind of crazy. I wasn't in the military. I was just a civilian training them. Um, But I kind of climbed the ladder. You're the second guest on the show to do the exact same thing, which I have never even heard about. so crazy. That is. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it was kind of crazy because I got into photography. I We really loved our wedding photographer and he's really the one that inspired me. He seemed to have so much fun and just really enjoy it. So on maternity leave with my second child, I started to dive in and I bought my first DSLR and I really was just having fun with it. And it was really just kind of to see. And I knew a couple of photographers who were making like what I thought was like relatively decent money. And so I just kind of just started to pursue that path. And then finally in 2015, I just thought, you know what, I I really want to pursue this full time. I had two kids under two years old and um, it was chaotic. And so I thought, you know what, this would be great because then I can photograph weddings on Saturdays and then I can be available during the rest of the week for my children. And then of course now my children are older. And so that changed because now if I'm gone on the weekend, so I decided to switch into portraits because I was in the makeup industry at the same time. So I wanted to pair both worlds together. And so when I discovered portraits and headshots and branding, I realized that I could put my skills together. So I do um, a lot of the hair and makeup for all of my clients that come in. It's all inclusive. There's wardrobe, styling, branding. I take a look at people's businesses and all that good stuff. So it is my full-time job now. I'm very, very pleased with um, the amount of work that I've been able to put into it. And it's been very, very gratifying. And most of all, when I started my portrait business, I asked a few ladies who I knew um, to come in and model for me. And you would be surprised that a lot of them were very resistant to come and model like for free. And I was like, that's a little weird. So I asked them and they were like, well, I don't like getting my picture taken. And I said, okay, well, if you don't like it, then of course you don't have to take any, you know, this is really just a trial and error for myself. And these women, when they came in and looked at their photos, they were crying. And I thought to myself, well, this is really, I was not expecting this. Like, and they were like, I never thought that I could number one, have a photo that I really loved. And number two, that I could actually feel this way about myself. And that's when I knew that I had struck something that I was like, I can't let this, like, I have to pursue this because this is so much more than just photography at this point. This is so much more than just like having a photo taken. It is so well beyond that. And, and this was like women ranging from like 20 to like, I had one lady come in, she was like 20 years old. And then another lady come in, she was like 45. And the reaction was the same for both. And I thought that's insane because how can someone who's 20 feel that way about herself? And, you know, I guess it would be a little bit less surprising to have someone at 45, um, feel that way. Cause you know, these women go through more growth. Um, so that's really what led me down this journey of wanting to empower women, because I knew that if this singular occurrence had so much impact that I had to do more of it. So that's why mostly now I f- photograph women because of that. And that's kind of what led me down this path. That's amazing. I love it. And I'm assuming you kind of had that same experience with your wedding photographer of feeling like having them pull things out of you that you can personally see yourself. Well, I, it wasn't necessarily the exact same, but it was definitely very much like, I just liked the experience that I'd had. Yeah, no, that makes sense. (laughs) Makes total sense. So one thing I want to talk about now, I know that you have, before we dive into the whole self-love weight loss thing, I want to talk about this really quickly because it kind of ties into what you were just talking about is this campaign that you do, I think, is it called Women Over 50, where you focus specifically on photographing women over 50 years old? Yeah. So it's called Beauty Over 50. And it came about because I really wanted, 
it became very apparent that women over the age of 50 just disappear from society. And I was like, what's up with that? You know, just because stereotypically and physically, they don't fit a certain Hollywood beauty standard. And so I really wanted to do something about that. As a photographer, I wanted to contribute as much as I possibly could to making sure that we were showcasing more real women, because I think it's really important for younger generations to see and even, you know, myself or myself to see. So it's been really, really gratifying because I've had so many women over the age of 50 come in and they're like, thank you so much for doing this. Because to be honest, I thought it was impossible for me to be beautiful anymore. And that sounds really, really hard. That's so sad. Yeah, because they basically their only use is now to just be a grandparent. And they're like, I don't know what it's like to even view myself as being sexy or view myself as being beautiful because I have one purpose and that's to watch my grandkids or like, you know, like there's so much disassociation that happens when they become empty nesters that it's like, well, what am I, what is my purpose anymore? They kind of have a, a sense of identity loss. So there's been so many things that have benefited from this campaign because women have just really come into themselves. And I've had so so many women just say like, thank you for doing this. And thank you for opening up a space that allows us to really kind of find ourselves again and find our beauty and be able to see ourselves in that way. Because it only gets harder as you get older to love your body, to like what you see in the mirror and to not disassociate with that. Mm -hmm. A lot of what you just said, it made me think about how I felt after I had my son too, like feeling just so lost and so confused and not even definitely not putting on makeup, let alone washing my hair a couple of days in a row, right? Because my sole focus is on this child. So it almost seems like we have seasons that we go through where we kind of feel this way about each other. So that could potentially be another campaign for you, like new moms. The one thing I want to talk about now is this feeling that you felt like you had to lose weight in order to be successful in your business where did that thought process come from? Like, how did you tie weight loss into business success? Um, It really came from, so when I started my business, because I had to restart it when I moved to the city that I'm in now, and I had to do a lot of networking. And that was a recommendation of a mentor that I had been working with at the time. And what was really hard is the women that I was seeing that had money, I say that with air quotes, because at that time I didn't really have a very full rounded view of women who have money and I, they were thin. And so it just, it honestly, it was a subconscious belief. I didn't even know that it was there. Like it had become deep rooted and it wasn't until I was working with, um, I had taken like a, a food mentoring program to kind of heal my relationship with food that I discovered that belief because I was kind of putting all this pressure on myself to lose weight. And this lady was like, well, why is that? Like, where did this come from, this pressure to lose weight? And I realized that I thought that if I had lost weight, that I would make more money and I would make more money faster. And honestly, after I had that discovery, I realized that not only was I trying to attract the wrong type of clientele, but I was also not being honest to myself. And I felt that I really, I needed to heal that first before I was really, really transparent with my audience about what success really looks like and who I want to photograph. And so I actually made more of an effort to really, um, I mean, I was already trying to do that beforehand, but I really made even more of an effort to really welcome in the women that don't fit that, like, cause I'll hear it all the time. Women say, oh, well, I, I'm not photogenic. And I'm like, okay, well, where's that come from? You know, and most of the time it comes from a certain body size. If they're not like over a size or if they're over a size 10, they're like, no, I I don't get photos taken. And I'm like, well, how come? And so I incorporated so much more of that into my marketing because I was like, there's a whole demographic of women that don't feel that they should be photographed because of their weight and their size. And then on top of that, they don't even feel like they should have success because of their weight and their size. And so I really had to heal that relationship with myself. And it's not a coincidence that at the same time, I decided to stop networking in person and start more chasing like an online audience because I felt that by networking in person, it was almost distracting me. And that was making it more difficult for me to feel good about myself. And so I needed to kind of veer away from that so that I could really, number one, see myself as being successful, no matter what my size and my weight was, if that makes sense. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 100%. This all makes sense. I can't tell you. Well, yeah. I can't tell you. The last time that I had photos taken for my business was 
it was right after my son was uh, maybe six months after my son was born because I included him in those photos. And for a long time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to lose the baby weight. Guess what? It's three years later. It hasn't gone anywhere. I'm pregnant again. So just more is <laughs> piling on right now. So I'm sure you've heard that from people too. Like I'm going to wait until I lose X number of pounds before I get photos taken because I, I know I cannot be the only person thinking that. Oh, 100%. I mean, most of the time, most individuals do say that on the phone, you know, if they're inquiring, they'll make a comment in my Facebook group and they'll say, you know, like now is really not the time I have to lose more weight. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, there's always going to be something else. And I mean, there is to some extent, I can tweak things with posing and angles as much as I possibly can. I've had women come in at their biggest or heaviest, rather heaviest weight. And they'll be like, those are the best photos that I've ever had, even more so when they were slimmer. And so this is going to sound crazy, but it's actually easier for me to photograph bigger women than it is for me to photograph slim women because slim women, slim women, and this is nothing again, this is not like a a blanket statement because it's not all, all slim women, but for the most part, um, women who are trying to find the right terminology that's not hopefully not going to offend anyone um but women that are let's say not at their ideal body weight are more open to loving themselves than women who are at their ideal body weight and that sounds crazy because women at their ideal body weight or like less than are like there's always they're always chasing more it's almost like there's more pressure for them because they're that close they're like so close that it's like oh well i can't like this because i'm so close to being able to like that versus like women who are farther away from their ideal weight are more open to it because they've spent so much longer not lo- lo- like not being in a body that they really love that they're just craving it that much more and so it's i it sounds really crazy, but I'm like, like, oh, if I, you know, had to like choose one off the street, I would be like, okay, well, you know, I want to choose a woman who's like, yes, I really want to love myself versus sometimes the other way, the woman will be like, well, I need to lose, I need to get more tone. So therefore I need to work out for another six months before I can come in and get photos taken. So it's just really crazy how that body dysmorphia kind of happens like in the, in the different um, ranges. But, um, yeah, it has been very, very gratifying to be able to help women of all sizes to be able to see themselves in a really beautiful light. Yeah. I mean, I can completely relate to that statement when I was at my lowest weight, which is honestly probably like seven, 70 pounds less than I am, maybe even more. I don't remember the exact number, but I was nitpicking everything because like you said, it's like, you're so close to getting there. It's like, okay, you just have to do like 10 more push-ups every single day and then just like compound it so that you can get like the really toned arms. Right. Whereas like once you, I think it's, I think it's easier to love yourself the bigger you are because I, I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know. Have you noticed that as well? Like with yourself personally, like even if you're not at your like quote unquote ideal goal weight, loving yourself as you are so much easier as you are now than your dream ideal version of yourself. Does that make sense? Yep. A hundred percent makes sense. Um, and I think it's because when you lose weight, you, it becomes, I think, especially after you've lost even a little bit of weight, you're like, Oh, well, I just need to get closer. And then it's like, it's like this obsessive chase towards something smaller versus like when you're bigger, you're not necessarily chasing being bigger. So it's almost like you have the freedom you have, you know, you don't have that like, um, compulsion, like magnetic obsession with being smaller. Because you're like, well, I'm not in- intentionally going to get bigger. So therefore you have all this emotional freedom to just fall into loving yourself. But it can also go the other way too, where you can't, not saying you have, but I know like for me, I really had to catch myself because I found that I was like in a hamster wheel of self-hate. And so, and that's where I was at when I was networking with all these women and I was seeing nothing but like wealthy, slim women that I was like, oh, well, I just have to hate myself into a smaller size. Just kidding. That doesn't actually work. Um, because then if you do that, then when you get smaller, you don't like that version either. So it's been a really beautiful experience to be able to fall in love with myself now because it just makes it that much easier to love myself when I am slimmer. And then I, I'm less likely to fall into that like obsessive trap of like, oh, I just need to chase an even slimmer version of myself. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yes. 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 Times a hundred <laughs> to all of that. 100%. Yeah. I, I, Totally agree. I don't even have anything to add to that. That was so good. Um, One other thing that I want to talk about, um, you do self-love coaching as well, like mindset, self-love coaching. Do you want to speak to that a little bit about how you decided to incorporate that into your business as well? Like what really led you to, 
I mean, I know you do like self-love coaching through photography and supporting these women, but specifically with coaching, that's kind of not necessarily tied to photography. How did that get started? Yeah. So basically it's just because I wanted to reach more women that I could not reach locally. So I wanted to like help more women fall in love with themselves. And it's been really, really incredible. The ladies that I've had through the programs that I put together have come out. Like actually, ironically, I just photographed one of them this morning and she actually came in to do a boudoir session. And this is the lady who like in her wildest dreams, like if you had talked to her four years ago, would have been like, yeah, over my dead body and laughed at your face. Um, And so it's been really incredible to see these women and like where falling in love with themselves took them. Because I always, I like to explain self-love as the launching pad. Like when you fall in love with yourself, your relationships improve, your sex life improves, your business improves. Because now all of a sudden you're not spending all that time during the day thinking about like, oh, I really just hate myself. And oh, I really hate my clothes. And oh, I really hate like how I feel. All of a sudden you have all this free time that allows and frees up in your brain to focus on giving your energy to all these other things. And it just flourishes. So um, yeah, it's that's really what it came to as I wanted to help more women. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. And if somebody were to come with you and they're really struggling with this, they're just kind of like at the point where they're like, I don't ever see myself loving myself unless I'm a size whatever, which we know that doesn't make any difference what size you are. What piece of advice would you give them today? Like what's one tangible tip that they could take away? Um, The one tip that I would say is to start asking questions. Why? Why? Why can't you love yourself at your size now? Why do you only get to love yourself at that size? And where do these parameters and expectations come from? Who who gets to define why you only get to love yourself at certain sizes versus other sizes? So I would just like, and literally keep the pressure on those questions until you get the answers. Because then when you get the answers, then you can start working yourself backwards and just find out like, okay, well, at what point? And honestly, most of those belief systems do come from society. They come from social media. And it's so much worse now than it was like back in the nineties. Um, but like ask questions, keep the pressure on it and be open. I think that's the biggest thing is like, be open to discovering an answer that you might fall in love with. And that's totally okay. Um, so ask questions and be open. Yeah, I think that's great. And be open to discovering answers that you may not be okay with either. The the truth, the scary truth, right? That we all have to come to terms with at one point or another. Um, That was really great. And one thing that I want to talk about before we wrap up is you bringing your husband home last year. So I know that you retired your husband from his job, which is amazing. Love that. It brings so much, so much freedom. I can officially say that now too. Now, how has this affected your home life, your business? Have things gotten, I mean, I'll let you share whatever you want to share, but have things gotten better at home and business? How have your kids been affected? Whatever, share whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah, absolutely. So it has been so beautiful to see this play out because my husband has never been allowed the pleasure of being able to discover what he really wanted to do in life. It's always been like, oh, I have to go do something and oh, I have to go earn money. Um, And so this was the first time where he was like, oh, I actually get to figure out what I want to do. And so that was really beautiful. I would say the biggest takeaway that we have benefited from, from him being home is the children. Because before we were both working and I was like, For example, like I would pick them up from school and then come home and then they would be like watching TV, not because I really wanted them to, but because like my job, like I wanted to grow the business. I couldn't, I couldn't have grown the business without that option or it would have been like, and I paid for after school care, you know, like they were in school a little bit longer. So then that way I could get more work done. And so now they, number one, get more parent time because he's uh, way more available um, because his job before he would be working all hours. Sometimes he'd be working overnight. And so it was just really crazy and really straining. And I would be a single parent a lot of the time. Um, and so they've gotten so much more attention and that like we have seen that like physically, like my kids are just like, they're so much closer to both of us because he's able, and they ask so many questions. They're like, oh, you know, like they understand like, the business and why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it has just been really beautiful because he's been able to like go and take them to all these things that they would have never had that experience if dad was working. So that has been, I think, like the most gratifying. 
and he started his own business. So he's uh, decided to be to go into copywriting for coaches. And so that's been really beautiful because he's been able to help me out in my business and my marketing. And in, in addition to that, he does help out also at my studio. And he it's just been really, really beautiful. He's been able to get so like he's been able to tap into things that he would have never been allowed the leisure of doing before. Um, and it's just been really, really beautiful. It's helped us in our relationship really discover, like there was a transition period for sure, because it was kind of like, okay, well, you know, do you want to do this? I invited him to do things in the business. And he was like, you know, what? I don't think I really, really like that. And I was like, okay, great. You know, no problem. Like, no worries. I'll, you know, outsource that to somebody else. And so it was really beautiful to see that kind of level of communication from both of us. I mean, there were some times where, you know, I would be a little bit too demanding. And so he was like, okay, I think you need to like let up a little bit. And I was like, okay. Um, so learning for both of us, but it has been really awesome because again, mostly for the kids, our kids have benefited the most from this. Mm -hmm. I can completely relate to that because my son, well, before my husband came home, it was just me and my son all day. And then he would see him for like two hours before bedtime. And now the two of them have such an incredible relationship. Granted, my son's three. So like as good of a relationship that you could have with a three-year-old. But I mean, I could not imagine living any other way. And also... I know that you mentioned the transitionary period. We're actually in the transition period <laughs> right now. And it is not easy to be completely honest because, I mean, I don't know what your experience is like, but he's kind of, uh, he'll probably kill me for showing this, but my husband's kind of at this point where, like you said, like he's been working every day since he was for the past 16 years in some kind of job. And for the past, what, six months or so, he hasn't been doing that. Like his responsibilities are around the household, taking care of our son and trying to figure out what he loves to do. And he's finding it so much more difficult than he realized, like man, not only managing household things, but figuring out what he wants to do with his life. I don't know. Did your husband go through something similar? Oh yeah. It's almost like an identity crisis because they're mm -hmm. like, it's almost like there's too many options. And so it was like, oh, what do you do when the world's at your feet? You know what I mean? So um, my husband really did have to do, and even now he's still looking for a life coach because he really wants like, because he sees what I'm doing and he sees the work that I'm doing. And he's like, oh, I think I want that. Like I want personalized feedback. And he's still in the process of finding one because he has ADHD. So we want someone who's ADHD specific because it, their brains work so differently. Um, I have ADHD, been, so I completely understand. <laughs> yep. Um, so it's just been really, I mean, definitely the communication, like we had to up it for sure. Like we had to sit, have sit downs and we were like, we just had to have conversations that we wouldn't have necessarily need to have before because we did have to talk about, you know, he would want to share his findings. He would do a bunch of research about, and he would want my input. He'd be like, well, what do you think? And so it was really challenging for me because I had to, you know, be like, okay, well here, this is what I would personally think, but also you need to kind of discover that on your own. So, um, it's been really eye opening and also really for me to like, I have to let go of like what I want for him because I want him to discover what he, re what really lights him up. So it's really just been like, kind of like a guiding path of just being like, okay, well, why don't you try it? Like, there's really no harm in trying. And then if you don't like it, you can always do something else. So there's been very much plenty of that. And that's been a trial on my patience because I've been like, okay, well, if it doesn't work, then, you know, what about the money? So it's been a lot of mindset work on my part. Cause I'm like, okay, just, you know, whatever, focus on my stuff. He can do whatever. And then if he doesn't like it, he can always go on and do something else. Cause I'm like, that's what I would want my kid to do. You know what I mean? Like I would want my kid to like, try it. And if they don't like it, go on and do something else. So that's kind of how I've approached at least that soul searching part of his journey to at least like really be supportive. So if he decides to do something, I'm like, yeah, go for it. You know? Like mm -hmm. I'll support you no matter what, because that's really what he did for me when I started my business. I was just thinking that I was going to say he would probably did the exact same thing because I was thinking my husband did the exact same thing. Like I had eight different businesses at one point. So like I could only imagine what was going on in his head at that point. So now like they get the opportunity to go through that too. And it's actually, I think it's really cool to like watch the evolution of somebody that you're so close to and go through something really similar. So this has been great. Thank you so much for being here. We kind of went off on multiple tangents, which always happens, but um, thank you again for being here. And where's the best place for everybody to connect with you if they either want to work with you on an online basis or even get photos taken? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my main website is miriambulcher.com. I do have a separate one for the self-love mentoring um, and it's self-love mentoring for women. Um, honestly, you can find things that are pretty for the most part tied together. So if you just type in my name, you can find me on Instagram 
Instagram. My handle's pretty much the same on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook. It's just my name, Miriam Bolcher. And uh, you can find photography information there, self-love information. I have a Facebook group, Self-Love Mentoring for Women. Um, but yeah, similar to you, I kind of have my hands dipped in a couple different buckets. Um, self-love mentoring, business mindset, um, coaching and photography. So yeah, that's where I'm at Instagram and all those places. That's amazing. Thank you again. Thank you so much.